Uh, so I'm Aaron Bryant, and this is uh, Michelle Zunti. And uh, I thought I'd just start uh, with just a brief overview of uh, who Crombie REIT is, for those not familiar with us. Um, so our um, core business is uh, high quality grocery and drugstore anchored properties. And our main focus is in the top 36 markets across Canada. We have about uh, $4.2 billion in assets, uh, 270 properties. I'm reading off the screen. I don't remember all this stuff. Off the top of my head. 19 point, this is quite recent. We did a, we closed a transaction or close to tra closing a transaction just recently as a three or $400 million transaction. So we're now up to about 19 million square feet coast to coast. And last year, our NOI, our net operating income, was about a quarter of a billion dollars. So our sister company is Sobeys, and they, they make up about half of our, our rent. Um, but we also have a lot of other large national investment grade tenants that make up about 68%, and then a lot of smaller tenants as well uh, across the country. Um, that's the company. Within the company, we have uh, leasing operations, uh, construction and design, uh, development people, um, accounting, finance. So uh, we sort of do the whole, the whole thing. Um, the focus of my group is just uh, Atlantic Canada, but we have uh, uh, similar groups that do what we do um, in central Canada and, and we're growing more out west. Um, so uh, within our group, we, there's seven of us. Uh, Michelle heads up our design uh, component, and then we have a design and construction coordinator that reports to Michelle. We have two project managers and an estimator and uh, an assistant. So it's a small group, uh, but in the run of a year, we, we look after around about 100 projects, and um, they would range anywhere from tens of thousands to tens of millions. Um, so probably around, if you totaled all that up in terms of budget value, we're about 50 million in total, but that's, uh, I can see that, that growing within Atlantic Canada. Um, as, a, as a frame of reference for some of the properties that we own, David mentioned before, and we'll get into this a little later, but this is uh, a big shopping centre that we have in Newfoundland. This is the Avalon Mall. That's uh, over half a million square feet uh, for the mall itself. But we have outbuildings in there and some other parcels of land adjacent to that that, uh, that we purchased recently and we're looking to redevelop. Uh, so that's a big, a big property for us in Newfoundland that, uh, that operates very well. We have good, uh, very little vacancy there and uh, good quality tenants uh, paying good rents. Um, this one's in Halifax, Hemlock Square, Bedford South. So we, this is going back a few years now, probably five or eight years. Um, this is a piece of land that uh, we cleared, uh, we serviced, we did, we, we did all the, the site design and uh, Civil design and layout savings came in and built their building. Uh, and then we built a number of buildings around that site ourselves. Like we, we designed them or uh, had, uh, had other people design them. And then uh, there's also banks and some other things like that on that site where the tenants come in and build their own buildings. Um, we own Scotia Square in Halifax. So that's uh, the Scotia Square Mall, Duke Tower, COBC Building, Barrington Tower, um, Barrington Place. Cogswell Tower. So I think that's about 1.7 million square feet of properties. So um, whilst I said our core business is, is typically uh, retail driven, we do also have a large component of office um, in Atlantic Canada. And this is just a couple, uh, some flavour of some of the properties that we have elsewhere. This one's in uh, Alberta. That's got a, a Safeway. Safeway uh, are now a big part of our portfolio as well. So we've acquired Safeway um, a year or two ago. So we, we bought a lot of those properties into our portfolio. And uh, this particular project is, a, is currently a Safeway store in uh, Davie Street in Vancouver. Um, and this will get started, this project will get started late this year or early next year. And this project's going to be, they're going to demolish the grocery store, uh, rebuild it, and then construct two towers, I think 320 apartments on it. Um, so we have lots of development opportunities like that uh, across Canada, particularly with the purchase of the Safeway properties where they're in uh, prime pieces of real estate. And uh, we're certainly uh, moving in a direction of um, 
multi-use properties and apartments as well. We're, we're actively looking at those type of, of projects. So that sort of gives a frame as a reference of who we are and, and what we do. Um, so a few years back, and it was about the time Michelle came on board with our, with our company, we were real, we really actively interested in uh, BIM and what that could do for us. Um, our company's been around for a long time, and um, consequently we have a lot of data that's um, unreliable or not there or in bits and pieces. Um, so that was a challenge for us. Uh, we were finding we were going into developments for tenants. We were producing drawings of information that we had that ended up being not very accurate, and then tenants moving to do their projects, and they're finding that the measurements weren't working out. Um, we have a, a large portfolio across a, a big area for us in Atlantic Canada. That means a lot of travel to different projects. Um, so that, you know, we thought um, that, that, that was one of the challenges that we, we've been having. Um, we saw BIM as, as a way to improve our efficiency and accuracy for budgeting and design and making, making that quicker. Um, a big part of doing a deal for us is, is the, the visuals that we can provide to our leasing team and our development team um, for pre uh, presenting to tenants. Um, so uh, we saw um, uh, BIM and, and, and all, uh, as, a, as a way for us to be able to improve uh, the materials that we can generate in-house to uh, help us relay the, the concepts that we're producing to our own internal team, but also for them to relay to uh, the tenants who are the, the trying to do business with us. Um, and then for us internally, we were interested in this because um, it's, it's uh, where the industry's heading. I mean, it's, it's why we're here today. It's the, it's the tools that you guys are all using or looking to use. Um, and whilst we, we, do, we do some design work in-house, uh, we do a lot of work with consultants, so for us, you know, it's important to be able to speak the language of, uh, of the consultants that are working for us and be able to understand the tools and also to use, it, use the tools, so. Um, and then moving forward, uh, you know, the challenges of having records that are not accurate is one thing. So we, see, we saw an opportunity to be able to generate and produce documents that were accurate moving forward that we could use for a variety of purposes. So that's sort of why we launched into our journey of exploring what uh, BIM could do for us. So with respect to accuracy of records, I'm just going to highlight a project that we're doing right now. This is uh, down at Scotia Square. We're adding 23,000 square feet of expansion onto the front of um, Scotia Square, so you can see the top drawing is the existing conditions, and, and then there's a rendering there that uh, shows the expansion, that's on over three levels. And um, we, uh, we use this, I think this is our first test case with uh, Seven Dumbrack. And um, they went in and they did the, uh, the laser scanning there, and um, we did that inside and outside the building because we're also doing a renovation inside. And uh, DSRA are doing the design work for us there. So what we did from the start of the project, um, they had already started building their model uh, when we had these guys get involved. And um, we were able to relay the, the, um, the point cloud data to DSRA and then they were able to go into their model that they had set up based on the, the drawings and the information they had and actually go in and uh, tweak and adjust their drawings to uh, provide a more accurate representation of the existing conditions for the drawings. Um, and then DSRA have gone, they did the rendering that's in that, in that uh, slide there. And then we did the whole uh, architectural, mechanical, electrical and structural tender package in Revit. So uh, we're a few months into that project. I know uh, the consultants had some really good feedback from some of the trade contractors about the quality of the drawings. Um, and also uh, we're seeing very little errors and emissions so far to date with uh, the project where we're at. So, um, so that's been very useful for us. This is the, the project that David uh, referred to earlier for the Avalon Mall. Uh, this, was, this was built in 1967 and um, we had very little information again on this property and we're looking to do a renovation here over the next three years that's um, 
fairly significant. So we thought it would be beneficial to go in and get accurate data for that right from the start. So when we're uh, doing our feasibility analysis and looking at concepts or working at accurate data, um, when we're presenting those concepts to potential tenants, we're giving them the accurate information. And then we also saw a cost saving advantage there too because um, as we develop through the project, we move into design development and we bring consultants in to uh, do the work for us. Um, there's not that need for them to go and visit the site and verify conditions and piece together drawings and try and figure things out. Like right from day one, we can say there's the package, there's the information, it's accurate. And so, so we're hoping to see when we get to that stage, uh, uh, assuming we're going to see a, a saving in the fees up front because uh, that data has already been generated. Um, so we had the mall scan, we had the roof scan, we had the parkade scanned, we had the outbuilding scanned. Um, and we had a model created. So you can see on the, on the drawing there some of that output. Um, we also took that model and we have a structural engineer, engineer that works, uh, does work for us over there that's worked on the mall for a number of years. Um, they had all kinds of drawings and bits and pieces of the mall over time. And we gave them that model and they were able to go in and take all that data that they have and then put that into our uh, model of the shopping centre. So it's kind of neat now we have, we have the architectural model, but we have the structural model, which is really useful for us when we're planning to uh, redevelop and renovate to get an understanding of you know, some of the obstructions that may be, may be there for us. Uh, we didn't do all the interiors, we did the common areas. We have within the model now, Michelle and, and Dwayne can go in and update the demising walls and, and things like that as, as tenants come and go. Um, yeah, so... Um, here's some, just some images. I stole these from David, actually, from David's presentation. He was kind enough to uh, share that with me before I put this together. So uh, we didn't do these ourselves, but uh, David's firm did that. Um, so that's kind of some of the, the output that uh, we can get from that information. Warren over there was also a big, uh, big help. I'm sure he put lots of man hours into creating that model. Yeah. Um, so I mentioned tenants, so all our projects, we do certified measurements at the end of a project. We, we use that so our tenants get the right area that they pay rents on. Um, we've been uh, talking with uh, IPEC recently. Uh, they came and did a demonstration for us to have a handheld laser scanner that they can walk around and uh, do quick scans inside spaces just to do some uh, uh, sort of accurate, quick... Um, reviews of existing conditions. Um, so we're looking at that right now as well because uh, we would typically get a, a certified measurement that's four walls and, and not much else. Um, but we're interested in this because this also gives us the ability to see some of the other information inside the space. So if, if there's a point cloud data there and we say, look, you know, the tenant's are actually interested in seeing where the walls are because we want to do some space planning or I mean, then ultimately as well, we get that file in a Revit format, so as we move forward and want to redesign that space, we can uh, use that as a starting point for our design. I mentioned before geographical challenges, and um, so the data that we get um, from, the, from the laser scans, we, we have software that, TrueView software and Navisworks software, that if I have some time at the end, I'll just share a quick overlay of that, but we can we can go into that software and uh, walk through, uh, whether it's the Avalon Mall or the Scotia Square, and uh, take a look at what we, data we want to see. So, you know, as the Avalon Mall progresses, we're talking to people about expanding onto the roof of the building and doing something. And we can actually, without jumping on a plane and going over there investigating, we can pull up a view of that, uh, that area. We can look at the roof plan. Um, I can take measurements of the exterior walls to see if we expand out over a road, if the grades will work. Um, that's just a shot of something inside the mall, you know, you can verify storefront measurements and like so. So that saves us time, that saves us money from having to travel around from, from site to site by being able to do all that virtually from our, from our offices, so that's uh, proven to be quite a useful tool. We're using that for design, now I made a, a point at the bottom of that, um, you know, we, we have this information in the models and we have stuff that um, is pretty user friendly and I, and I can see a, a benefit with that down the road potentially with our leasing and operations and marketing people where we already have that sort of 
photographic quality or uh, information that people can move around and, and see. And I can see an, an advantage there, expanding that from uh, a leasing and operations point of view too, to be able to show tenants virtually the sort of properties and things that we have. There are quite a few tenants as well that have never been to Newfoundland, but they're a national tenant. They could potentially be in Toronto and really have no idea what the mall looks like. So this way we can relay information that's accurate and quite visual. Mm -hmm. So design and budgeting, this is kind of the stuff that counts, right? It's the dollars and cents. And um, we, we do all our in-house design in Revit. Um, that's Michelle. Michelle prefers using Revit. That's what she uses. She doesn't do it because I tell her to or someone else tells her to. <laughs> Michelle does it because she thinks it's quicker and more efficient. Um, and we've been evolving our expertise in that over time. So one of the things that we do is uh, um, we're drawing up uh, projects in-house for concepts for our development or leasing people. Um, and then from that, we're generating our own renderings of three-dimensional images, floor plans, elevations. But we're all produ also producing schedules of quantities uh, to be able to do uh, budgets. Um, I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But a few years back, we'd, we'd take two or three days to do up a building in-house in uh, CAD. And then we'd pass that to our estimator and he'd measure the quantities and take a day or two, depending on his schedule. So within about a week, we could normally have something like that to our team members on, on the cost and the like. Um, the way we're doing these now with the libraries we have set up for the buildings, we can take a, like we do a lot of strip malls, we can do like a five or 10,000 square foot strip mall we can now draw that, take the quantities off, do the rendering, do the budget in a day easily. It's really quick and efficient and accurate and the information is really useful. Uh, you're not going to be able to see that really well, but that's, um, that's sort of what that looks. Michelle will do that up, give that to me. That's an elevation floor plan and there's a schedule down the bottom there. This is actually from a project. We did a, a strip mall at Russell Lake that looks like that. That's sort of the rendering Michelle did and, the, and what it looks like today. Um, we actually did this as a test case. We did this after the fact because we'd already built this and we were curious to see how we could do budgeting uh, in Revit. So Michelle went back and actually drew this in Revit based on the contractor's drawings. And we set up a, a schedule with costs in it in Revit uh, for all the key elements of the building, which was probably 90% of the building. Um, and I didn't give Michelle the contractor's pricing. Uh, and we compared the numbers and it was, it was like very, I can't remember, it was very close. Like it was like within a very small margin of difference to the actual final cost of the project. So that was really um, interesting for us to see and really kind of kept us going down that path of doing this. And um, we're, not, we're not really using the um, estimating side of it so much within Revit as much as I think we're doing using it more for the quantity takeoffs just because um, I think there's value in using Revit for quantity takeoffs to get the information correct but we're sort of constantly updating our data on costs and the like because as we close tenders we update our unit rates and the like so we kind of keep that separate and keep our estimators looking at the rates and thinking about that and then I think the value with this has been able to produce the drawings for our estimators that have the quantities to say we doing all that work. Um, I'm hoping in the future that that'll integrate a bit better and, and we can streamline that so we can actually produce uh, a drawing and, and a budget really easily in the one format. But um, I'm not seeing that at the moment, but I'm hoping that'll evolve that way. I mentioned before too, uh, presentation materials is, is really important to us and our team. It's, it's, it's part of what we do. It's the way we do business. It's, it's, it's the norm now for us, our, our leasing people, our development people, um, when we provide them information, it's, the rendering is part of it. It's, um, it's a really important part of our business. Um, so we do a lot of those in-house, Michelle does all that. Um, but we, we do a lot of like a more complex project like the Barrington expansion or some other things we're looking at, we would do that. Uh, if we're working with, a, with a, an architectural firm, we, we would rely on them to do that for us as well. Um, 
And the nice thing about having the Revit model with uh, the architects say DSRA's model right now for the Scotia Square expansion we're doing, we can, we can move around that model. We, can, we get questions from the leasing people, like we have someone interested in this space, but they don't really understand how it's going to work. We can move around inside the model. We can look at that view. We can take a snapshot, a three-dimensional view of that. Uh, just really quickly, like within a matter of minutes, I can do that in a meeting. We can be talking to people and I can move around a model and show them a three-dimensional perspective of the area that we're talking about. And then if they want to pursue that some further, then we can uh, take that and then and render that and, and uh, make that into more of a presentation uh, tool. So here's just some, some of the sort of examples of the images that uh, Michelle's done. This is the, the top one's a Scotia Square expansion project we did. So this was just something uh, we did recently because the, we're starting to lease up that space now for some more food court uh, users there. So Michelle will want to uh, produce that just to kind of give the guys a, a sense of what the space will kind of look and feel like for one of the tenants that they were talking to at the time. Uh, the image below was from a hotel that we were talking to just to give them a sense of what that space could look like. And here's some of the sort of typical renderings we would do in-house, just sort of rough site plans. Um, the one down the bottom left is uh, the liquor store we're building in Queen Street right now. Um, and the other two are just some other concepts and proposals we're working on out west and one here in Atlantic Canada. So moving forward and in conclusion with, I guess, what we do, um, I, I heard a little bit this morning quite a few times the comment that there, it seems like there's a bottleneck from the perspective of owners that, you know, uh, as consultants, you guys, or we're, we're interested in um, this technology, but we're finding that there's not really an interest in an uptake from an owner's perspective. Um, from our perspective as an owner, um, we're, we're, we're very interested in it, and we've invested in this technology. We have, we have the tools. Um, we use it actively daily. It's a standard part of what we do. Um, and we have a preference in working with consultants that use those tools. Um, we, we did a design RFP recently for a project, um, and we didn't say it was a requirement to use Revit, but we just said we had a preference if, if, if you did use Revit. And sort of left it open, because for that particular project, it was, um, it was not a very sophisticated project, but um, uh, the, the firm that was uh, the low bidder on that project um, actually carried Revit within their fee. So I thought that was interesting that, you know, we put that out competitively. We said, you, you know, we, we'd like you to use Revit. You don't have to. And then the firm that ended up being the low bidder on that um, is going to be using Revit. So, um, so that's really good. And then in that scenario, we can, you know, we have the file already developed because Michelle's already done the concept in Revit. We can just pass that file on and they, they can use that moving forward. So hopefully there's a cost savings there as well. Um, but I understand architecturally, I think my sense is maybe that's getting a lot closer. But we are, we are finding like if we're doing drawings ourselves, Michelle does a lot of drawings in-house. She's a qualified interior designer. So a lot of the fit-up stuff that we do, we'll do in-house and we get mechanical, electrical consultants to come and do the work. I think we're finding more and more the feedback from that is, uh, yeah, we can do that for you, but that's more money. Um, take longer and more money. Take longer. It's not as efficient. It's going to cost more money. So we're sort of hoping as the industry evolves and you guys figure all this stuff out, that we reach a point where that's just standard practice. There's not a question of us assessing that, saying, okay, well, you know, is there value in us in spending the extra money for that, or is this something that's a little more straightforward? We don't necessarily need to spend the money on it. So um, it always becomes a question for us of, um, economics of the type of project we're doing. The more bigger and sophisticated the project is, particularly for new projects, uh, the more interest we have in, in doing in Revit and sometimes paying a premium for that. Um, I mentioned before about moving forward for us that um, hopefully we'll get to a point where we have can find something that's a little more integrated in terms of Revit and budgeting. I think that would be neat. I think there's an opportunity as we move forward to integrate this with uh, life after we touch it and build it that our operations people and marketing, leasing and development people down the road can use that in ways that uh, um, is practical. Um, and then for site planning purposes right now, um, I think that's probably one of the challenges we have. We don't, we don't use Revit for that. We do a lot of site planning and site design and laying out buildings on sites and 
uh, we haven't found that very effective. We're finding Revit good for us internally in terms of doing buildings, but uh, in terms of doing site planning and the stuff, I, that doesn't really seem to be there for us yet. Um, and I'd like to get there because obviously when people see site plans we generate, they think everything's flat and then when they go to the site afterwards and there's hills and walls and stuff, they get a bit confused. So I'd like to be able to present that from day one with all those grades and contours in a way that uh, the people that we present to can, can understand. Um, so I might, I've got a few minutes left. I thought I'd just quickly flip up um, the Namuswork file that we got for the Avalon Mall. It's, it's, it's kind of a neat representation of uh, the output of that project. So I'll just, I'll just run that just quickly. Good idea. So, <laughs> so that was it for our presentation. Thank you very much. You mentioned you make use of as-built uh, documentation for the entire life cycle of the project because you have tenants moving. And so, do you involve the consultants, uh, your, your contractors, in in the production of the as-builts for specifically for the Revit models, and maybe specifically to a project like Scotia Square? Um, because I, I think this is fairly new technology for us. The the Scotia Square project is really the first one. Uh, that we've done of that sort of scale, um, that everything's been done in Revit. And um, so the plan with that is at the end of the project is we'll get that as built information and then update the Revit model. So moving forward, um, we have that information for sure, yeah. Is it, was that your question? Uh, yeah, 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 for sure, yeah. Any other questions from the floor? Okay, I have one, Aaron. Um, and, and you you, uh, you answered my first question when you said on the latest design tender that you put out there, you indicated a preference for the use of BIM, and that was uh, uh, quite nice to hear that uh, that uh, one of the respondents, in fact, did say they were going to carry that in their fees. My next question is, are you at a point now where you are considering uh, uh, asking the contractors to provide an as-built BIM model back to you? So as they go through construction, whatever changes uh, from the design and the construction drawings, are you asking them or are you even thinking about having those reflected in the model? So what you get back is an as-built BIM model, which positions you well for future you know, facility management, marketing, things like that. Where are you with that? Um, actually, that's a good point. I, I had that as one of my uh, points at the end, and I didn't, I didn't speak to that. But um, as I talked about some of the things that we're, we're, we're interested in, looking at moving forward that we don't really do yet, that we're interested in is, is um, everything that I sort of talked about was design related. Um, but uh, the stuff that happens on the job site and the, and the construction side, um, I think there's, there's more scope there for understanding what, what that does for us. So the focus has been primarily on the documentation side. So with respect to as-built drawings, um, you know, with the, with the Scotia Square project, um, that would be something that we'd be getting the consultants to do. Right. But your question relates more to having the contractors doing that, and um, that's a good or point. Or the constructors. Yeah, and it's not something we've thought about. And it's, you know, I think the whole role of the general contractor for us, because um, we, we use general contractors a lot, and, and how they connect into this whole process is something we're still sort of at the infancy stages okay. with, but certainly interested in, for sure. Well, the uh, presentation that uh, the folks from Pomerlo are going to give this afternoon, uh, well, actually, you saw from Dexcel first, where they were using iPads on the job site mm. to verify as constructed conditions. Same thing, you're going to see that with the Pomerlo, uh, the Alexander Building Project. So you get a, a real glimpse of how that works. Mm. And, and uh, the point there is that a lot of the constructors and the contractors are readying themselves to, they have a BIM model that's available to them, they will use it for on the job site. So given that you're doing a lot of your projects in BIM, you know, there's quite a few constructors and contractors out there, I'm sure, who'd be really happy to see that. Because they could use it for that. But thank you very much. Yeah. Any, any more questions? No? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much.